Hello world, ready to seize your dreams and make them real? Warmest welcome to World Humanitarian Drive's 23rd episode of Inspiring Millions Show. This is the show where we celebrate brilliant minds from around the world who share with us their story. Today, our featured guests are Dr. Billy Tang Chi Seng and Samantha Mok Su Wei. We'll get to know their inspiring story in a short while. Thank you for joining us live or in replay. I'm Viva Andrada O'Flynn, your host and global media relations of World Humanitarian Drive. World Humanitarian Drive, also known as WHD, is an international NGO founded in Croydon, UK by British Indian global peace activist, entrepreneur, writer, Dr. Abdul Basit Saeed. The primary vision of WHD is to promote peace, education, and trade harmony initiatives globally among everyone across the world, regardless of race, gender, religion, or nationality, living as one family. This Inspiring Million show is your show. As always, we encourage you to engage and interact with us. Please help us spread inspiration to the world by sharing this link. Put your questions that you would like to ask our honorable guests, Dr. Billy, Tang, and Samantha of Malaysia, or comments that you have for us in the chat box. We will read them later on in the show. Let us also know where you are watching this. Wherever you are in the world, let us keep you company and brighten your day as we share peace, love, and goodwill. The month of July is Global Enterprise Agility Month that brings awareness and focus to the conversation and actions we can all take to make sure our organizations not only survive, but strive, creating happier employees and customers. Today, 9th of July is Call of the Horizon Day, a day about dreaming big, seizing these dreams and making them happen. Today, we are very fortunate to have with us people who bravely overcome challenges, dares to dream big dreams by creating jobs, growing goodness, and helping the community. Dr. Billy Tang Chi Sang is the founder and CEO of multi award winning social enterprise PWD Smart Farm Mobility. Today, he is joined by Samantha Mok Su Wei his goddaughter and co-founder of PWD Smart Farm Mobility. Let's all welcome Malaysia's paraplegic farmer, Dr. Billy Tang Chi Seng and Samantha Mok Su Wei. Salamat Ditang. Salamat Ditang. Salamat Ditang. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us here today. So how are you both today? We've just had our dinner and actually Dr. Billy is in a little bit of pain, so that is why I'm jumping in to support. And you've yeah. also had a really busy day today. Yeah, uh, we, we did. We actually just came back from, uh, from one of the hospitals supplying the or organic fishes and organic vegetables to the frontliners. And the situation is really bad. Like uh, there's more than 9,000 cases, 9,000 new cases of COVID-19 today. And um, yeah, we have a lot. We have a lot of friends out there demanding a total lockdown. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty hectic over here. And even with this crisis, there's still a lot of people out there needing help. And our work cannot stop, even though yeah. compassion fatigue is running all time high, right, <laughs> Doctor Billy? Right, that's yeah. right, that's right. But we got to brave up and uh, uh, serve the people. Yeah. Well, we hope that the situation will improve. So let's get our discussion started. Could you please briefly introduce yourself to the world, Dr. Billy? Okay. Um, I awakened to a horror in which I could not feel my body from waist down to my feet. And in an intensive care unit, uh, in a hospital room, I drifted in and out consciousness after being rescued from the car accident, wreckage. Uh, involving my 4x4 Land Rover Defender. The doctor said I would never walk again. Confined to this wheelchair for the rest of my life as a paraplegic. I spent six months in the hospital uh, battling suicidal thoughts 
and I have no other choice other than to rise above my state of despair and uh, fight for my independence. And uh, I took the bold step to cultivate my passion uh, to farm again. Along the journey, I met many good people uh, who lent me their strength and equally many people who pose a major threat as well and challenges to my ambitions despite being wheelchair bound. So here am I today, fast forward five and a half years later, 2021. My team and I are now well known for our advocacy in ethical farming and environmental health and making new safe and nutritious food accessible to all economic backgrounds within the means of the planetary health. And um, I'm thankful for being able to tend to my mother's farmhouse with my goddaughter, Samantha Mok, <laughs> my personal helper, Rose Ann Matienzo from the Philippines, who have uh, looked after me. Uh, yeah, she's great. <laughs> yeah, for the, for the fourth coming fifth year. Fifth, it's yeah. Yeah, fifth year. Yeah. yeah, and an older brother whom I've known for 30 years. There are my hands and my legs on the engineering side. Uh, Jimmy Kang. Yeah, he's great too. <laughs> <laughs> my team has stuck with me through thick and thin. And now they have given me peace and uh, an escape from all the pain I've left behind. I would like to quote Helen Keller once says, Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through the experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, vision cleared, ambition inspired, and success achieved. So promise yourself, no matter how hard it is, you were never going to give up on your dreams. And I would like to take this opportunity to my disabled peers. Do not hide away from society. Engage with society. Do not give up hopes and dreams and life works because of physical limitations. Look within your God-given gifts and talents and serve above self, striving for humanity. Everything we live, be it gladness or sadness, joy or pain, health or illness, can all be part of the journey toward the full realization of our humanity. Nonetheless, care means willingness to help each other in such a trying times like this in Malaysia and around the world, in making our brokenness into a gateway of joy. Thank you, Viva. That's very inspiring, Dr. Billy. Yeah. And that's just the introduction. Yeah. <laughs> Samantha, so you're- I can the... talk for hours if, yeah. if you, if yeah, you if like, me up. There's no time limit. We can talk for 24 hours on, on what we actually do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's so amazing. So Samantha, you're the co-founder of PWD Smart for Mobility. Could you please introduce yourself to the world? Okay, sure. Uh, my name is Samantha. People call me Sam. I'm actually a writer and a strategic planner in advertising, but um, I sort of left advertising behind to pursue agriculture because uh, I, I, had, I had an interest in agriculture in the first place. But the funny story of how I met Dr. Billy was because um, initially why I kind of left the advertising industry was because I felt that my skills could be put to better use. As, as a writer, I really believe that writers can change the world because I mean, writers actually rule the world. If you look at it, when you when you look at entertainment, it, um, when you look at entertainment, when you look at history, all of these things are are written by writers. When you look at how um, countries achieve peace and all of these letter exchanges, all of these treaty peace treaties and everything, they are all written by writers. And I really believe in the power of writing. So when I was in marketing, I I realized that a lot of us writers were contributing to this thing called consumerism, where just encourage people to buy and buy and buy, buy more things that they don't need. And when I, because I, I have been volunteering in food banks and free clinics, and I realized that there are so many unsung heroes out there that really need the voice of these marketing things, but they don't have the budget. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put my skills to good use. Like instead of helping already rich corporations become richer, I'm just going to like 
lend my little skills to all of these unsung heroes. And then I came across Dr. Billy, who's in a wheelchair. And despite being in a wheelchair, he's, the, he's probably like the first and the only guy that I've ever come across who's in a wheelchair and doesn't even talk about his pain, doesn't even talk about himself or anything. All he talks about are his dreams of um, fixing the ecosystem, make, inspiring the people with disabilities around him. And because he's an agriculturist, he has this scientific backing of the things that he's saying and uh, with a little bit of science background so I kind of got where he's going and I thought you know what this is it we're just going to collaborate and so here am I ever since <laughs> and um, I'm so glad I'm, I, I feel like I'm really thankful to have met Dr. Billy because I, I don't think I don't think um, a combination of a mentor and mentee like us can exist so easily I mean look at all the accolades that we've <laughs> achieved in just 18 months you know and I'm, I'm just so thankful because he taught me so much and through him I could realize my full potential and it's it's like to substantiate that you know if people were to not look at money or selfish gain so much and just collaborate with people who are actually genuine about doing the right thing so so much impact could be done you know it's just it's just that one bold step and I'm really glad that I made that step three years ago. So yeah, that's a short introduction of who is the Bob of us. <laughs> yes, hi five. That's great. So Samantha, yeah. you're putting your writing skills to good use. You're helping out charities, especially Dr. Billy's charity to I helping out. We are more of a yeah. social enterprise. And yeah. uh, why I want to emphasize on social enterprise is because there's this um, debate in the academic space of business where is the question is are social prices are social enterprises actually sustainable so that, that so so in fact social enterprises is a really new business model and um because a lot of things are still measured in gdp and roi so there's this debate going on like is this even sustainable are the impacts even measurable and there's this whole thing about qualitative impact quantitative impact all yeah, of this nonsense thing so we are working really really hard to show the proof to of concept. Show, number one, show the proof of concept, and number two, to set the precedence that yes, social enterprise can be sustainable. And um, yeah, we are giving everything that we've got with almost no, uh, nothing for reference except Dr. Billy's experience in agriculture <laughs> and my experience in marketing. So it's a really tough road because I think there's a lot of noble, noble things that we are trying to do over here, including the scientific inventions that we have and including the business model so yeah i'm so and we are so thankful that um so many people have came alongside us we didn't do this all on our own so yeah, many so people and i wish that we could thank each and every one of them here today but of course due to time limit we couldn't like including this house yes. that we are staying in is actually sponsored by Kat karima rent free everything and we have good samaritans who offer to uh, free logistics for us to like ship the ship our goods to the poor at no cost at all so many so many good yeah. people have come alongside to make this success to make this the success of a successful story so it's really not just the both of us it's right. many many it's the hope and trust of many many people that we are bearing so no matter what we have to work our asses off to make this succeed <laughs> 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 yeah so samantha it's great that you help pw the farm ability to amplify their message too. So to yeah. our virtual audience, if you have any questions that you would like to ask Dr. Billy or Samantha, just please send them now and keep the questions coming. So Dr. Billy, you are known as Malaysia's paraplegic farmer. How did you start up PWD Smart Farm Ability and what is the mission behind it? Okay. Uh, PWD is not public works department. Uh. <laughs> it is people with disabilities, all right? Smart, the time before COVID, I was thinking about smart nation. A lot of people is talking about IoT, RR 4.0, smart nation, smart city, smart living. I was thinking to myself, where is a smart farm? You know, uh, we shouldn't be uh, adding uh, food miles and uh, adding costs input costs to the transportation, you know, and uh, ship our food into a smart city. So that is where we, I started with PWD Smart Farm. Then uh, I was thinking to myself, how, how can I farm again, you know, on a wheelchair? Yeah. I need that ability. In a wheelchair. Yeah, I need that ability to farm again. 
that's where the name was birthed, PWD Smart Farm Ability. That ability reminds me uh, all the time that, uh, look, I can still farm again in a new way. Yeah, uh, I would like to quote uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, the first prime minister of India once said, everything can wait, but not agriculture. So this pandemic uh, has taught us a lot of things, yeah? So uh, I'm passionate about finding practical solutions to heal the earth. We need to care for the earth because it is the only one we have. We need to care for the plants because they are the supplier of our oxygen. We need to love, share, unite, appreciate one another. Beside this earth, humans and living things here on this planet earth, there's, there is only emptiness out there in space millions of light year away. And then we want to exceed from this earth and want to go to the moon, you know? And uh, all I can say is that love and not hate, unite and not divide. We can learn so much from nature, farming, and growing food will change our mindset, simplify our desires, and uh, purify our hearts. What better way is there to transform us? Also, it is inexpensive to embark on this meaningful life journey. And behind us is a demonstration of a box of vegetables that is regenerative, that we can bring in a home without you being a farmer and you can eat out of it with zero mouse diet and you add food literacy as you consume, you know, there's so much goodness out of this. And no fertilizer. And no fertilizer. We can go another 24 hours talking about the scientific stuff of this book, but we are not So in to. short, <laughs> we are bringing biology back to the soil. Yeah. So, and our vision, you just now asked me, what is our vision is nutrition can save our nation. I think they have a video. Yeah, they yeah, they can play the video. Much, yeah. That actually, in the video, they can see our farm and everything. All right, so, yes. Well, okay, they, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, watch the video. The video. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to express the pain I'm going through, uh, but because of my passion that turns to compassion in this work, sometimes I forget about myself. Most of the time, I forget about myself because this works is above my pain. In 2015, Dr. Billy Tang was involved in a serious accident which left him with broken ribs and a spinal cord injury. It also robbed him of his ability to walk. Tang endured severe depression, but with the love and support from his family and friends, he embraced his new life as a paraplegic. With the support of so many people, my, especially my families, my friends, uh, 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 that have come alongside, has helped me to rise from the ashes today. So this is the result of uh, uh, me not distancing myself from, from loved ones, family and society. So yeah, I want to inspire my peers not to withdraw yourself from society and uh, if you have your dream, your hope, your life works, um, uh, you still can fulfill it, you know, uh, never give up attitude. Tang was an agriculturist by profession and a private researcher for over 20 years before the accident. Determined and spirited, he returned to his area of expertise in urban farming. He now reaches out to the disabled communities and underprivileged families through his social enterprise called Persons with Disabilities or PWD Smart Farmability. How to rise above with this wheelchair? How to farm again? So that's where PWD Smart Farmability was formed. Disabled people finally had a chance to reconnect to society through the innovation that PWD Smart Ability has innovated. Thanks to his self-sustainable terrarium organic vegetable box adoption program, Tang is able to provide fresh and nutritious produce to his peers and those in need. So we are running an adoption program through our innovation 
this Love Gift Terrarium Organic Vegetable Box will land in their home uh, that they can consume from this Love Gift Box from the netizen or the oil esteem organization that adopt this box for them to eat healthy first. Paying consumer can also have a healthy option instead of buying decomposing vegetables from the supermarket, you have a healthy option by uh, adopting our program. Sharing Tang's love for his new farming concept is his goddaughter and partner, Samantha Mok, who says the terrarium box called Hope is full of nutrients. Well, in, in this box, we are driving a complete nutrient cycle, a complete carbon cycle, a complete nitrogen cycle that is regenerative. We want to, we want to tell people that it, that regenerative agriculture is the way to go. It is the way forward for human health. And we are using OKU platform to drive that. These boxes are designed to self water and remain regenerative for at least three months. Each box can be adopted for 150 ringgit and can later be replenished at Tang's smart farm located in Subang Jaya. He says nutritious food should not be a luxury and encourages more companies and capable individuals to adopt these hope boxes so that not only people with disabilities but poor families will also be able to benefit more so during this COVID-19 pandemic. We, we want to create a business model that they will have uh, a social entrepreneurship of their own because we got uh, banks that come to us and say that uh, what they are funding CSR is not sustainable. They want us to think out of the box and create a business model for an OKU and a family or you know, to be sustainable. And one thing that we notice is largely due to the public mindset has towards OKU, like, oh, we have to help them be independent. So that's like a bit, a bit counterintuitive already, you know, you don't have to like help them. You need to see them in a different light. You need to talk about them differently and you need to give them a platform to step up to pre represent themselves differently. PWD Smart Farmability plans to set up more mini farms in areas where NGOs for the disabled are located so they will not only get good produce but also inculcate food growing skills. Tang also recently launched another adoption program called Adopt a Fish, Feed a Family, in which organic tilapia fish priced at 35 ringgit each is donated to underprivileged families. Breaking the stereotype perception, this paraplegic farmer truly believes his peers can be independent, champion urban farming, and also contribute to the nation's economy. My hope is that uh, they will view us as, hey, okay, you are our farmer, our food, our health. Let's not fight there. Let's not park and take their car parks. <laughs> and, uh, and for our toilet, let's not misuse their toilet because they see us being useful now, uh, being connecting into society and not being drawn away further away from society. And uh, this is our avocation and uh, uh, to reconnect back to society uh, through uh, 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 the uh, innovation that we have. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that video. If you yes. notice, I lost a lot of weight. It's also because <laughs> we've been eating nutritiously. I was telling time. him, you look, you look at yourself that time. <laughs> so plump. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. admire your never give up attitude, your teamwork that help yeah. you overcome challenges and innovate solutions to problems. So can you please tell us more about your project, your Feeding Without Borders project that PWD Smart Farm Mobility is collaborating with World Humanitarian Drive Malaysia chapter under the leadership of Professor Dato Dr. G.P. Dore Sami. Okay, yeah, um, we are very, very fortunate to connect to um, Professor Dato Dr. G.P. Dore Sami, who he himself has five decades of social um works um and um having him to guide us as our um senior, senior board advisor, board advisor yeah. you know uh we can avoid many pitfalls he's yeah. really holding our hands as we walk every step of the journey yeah, yeah. in fact uh, uh we were working 
uh, uh, when we met him, we were overjoyed because we're actually doing feeding without borders. Yeah, we were doing it already. And then after yeah. that, he came and introduced to us a WHD Malaysia chapter. And right. there's this pillar under trade for peace, which is yeah. exactly what we're trying and to do. Exactly yeah. what we have been doing, you know. <laughs> so so we were we were overjoyed that uh, we, 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 we have that concept, a proof of concept, and we empowered so many people, you know. Uh, so, uh, uh, coming to your question is that uh, uh, we can see that during this lockdown, uh, which lasted uh, uh, the first lockdown that we have, you know, and now it's lockdown after lockdown, we, we could not go back to our farm to harvest our produce, actually. You know, our, our fish has grown uh, into giant size, you know, and when we want to sell it to a restaurant, they say it's too big. They won't buy from us, you know, and uh, and it says if I if I buy from you, the customers come and dine. Uh, eating your fish is enough. No need to order other dishes, <laughs> you know. And then and then uh, we want to sell to those who can who, who to the homes that can buy from us. And say, hey, the fish too big. I don't know how to cook, you know. So I ended up uh, having this thought of why don't uh, we run an adoption program, you know that uh, that uh, the 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 poor uh, do not have a decent protein, you know. Uh, uh, let, let's try to run an adoption program. It's actually a funny story. Yeah. It, it was, in fact, an accidental program that became really, really successful yeah. until that we can have campaigns after campaigns. So like Dr. Billy was saying, our fishes were around two kilograms, uh, super huge, okay? That, like they were on my profile picture last time. And none of the families wanted to buy them because it's too big. And then we, we thought to ourselves, what a waste. There are so many hungry people out there, especially right now in Malaysia. I'm not sure if our, our audience here are aware of the situation. We are encouraging the poor people to raise, right, raise white flags outside of their houses. And everyone, whether they are individuals or NGOs, they are pouring in money to you know, contribute food and diapers and milk powder to all of these families. And the problem is there's no nutritious food out there for these poor people because it has been a long time, you know, organic food is only for the rich, or at least over here. I'm not sure about other countries, but so when we had those kind of fish, the amount of fishes that we have, and none of the families wanted to buy them because they were huge. And Dr. Billy just thought, you know what, let's just run an adoption pro program to make this available for the poor. And it became super successful, like one of the most successful viral campaigns that we've driven. And then we continue to drive them until now. So we have an international foundation who has committed to adopt 900 of our fishes and 1.8 tons of our vegetables every month to feed 400 fam 450 families. And this is a joint collaboration with um, WHD Malaysian chapter. And um, because w WHD Malaysian chapter has a lot of uh, poor communities under their care as well. So we are working together with them to identify the poor people. So this one, so the photos that you see over here actually what we were doing this morning, we went to hospital. Afternoon. Uh, this, this afternoon, we went to hospital Kuala Lumpur to distribute 50 fishes and we are committing 100 fishes and 100 kilograms of fresh, uh, fresh vegetables week. every week to feed our frontliners because they are really battling uh, various new strains of the COVID. And the, and the person that you see over here, he's the head of dietitian in this hospital. And he mentioned that, you know, to have a balanced diet and a balanced nutrition in your diet is of utmost importance right now. Yeah, and adoption, uh, uh, the adoption that we had, and uh, uh, we opened up to other countries. So we were, we were really surprised, you know, uh, Cambodia, Singapore, yeah, yeah, yeah. Philippines, Australia, all came alongside to, to adopt our fish. And uh, the, the, the very touching story is that Microsoft staffs, they passed the money back around and yeah. collected 14,500 over ringgit, yeah. which is about uh, 400 over fishes, you know. Uh, just the staffs, you know. Uh, uh, it wasn't uh, even an yeah. official initiative. Yeah, correct. It was something that the staff thought, hey, you know, let's help this farm and they just passed the money back around <laughs> and collected right. 14,000 ringgit to adopt like 400, 417 fishes and all of them have gone out to the poor right now to date. I think Google we have uh, yeah, yeah we have a Google sheet that's completely transparent where you just click on the link and you can see all the fishes yeah. that has been adopted by who and gone to which family. Yes. Everything is there. 1, and I, more than that already. I yeah. lost count because every <laughs> because like every week I'm every day I'm updating the sheet. We kind of lost count. I think it's close to two thousand already. So yeah, so yeah, those are the vegetables and the fish that has been going out to the poor. And um I'm pretty sure in 
earlier in the video, they saw our terrarium, right? Maybe Dr. Mm. Dini can share a little bit about the yeah. terrarium so that I can show them this yeah. one. This, okay, I have to make sure that all three yeah, of us okay. are in the So um, uh, you can show them this one. So this is the world's mm. first organic vegetable terrarium. It's designed to make healthy, nutritious, organic harvest available to the poor and needy community. Okay, it is a, a regenerative with no need for fertilizers or daily watering. And to date, we have people harvesting from the terrarium for 23 months and still going. 24. Yeah, so uh, if you bring biology back to the soil, with healthy soil, you will have healthy plants. If you have a healthy plant, you will, you will have a healthy citizen and you will have a wealthy nation. So the ultimate goal of farming is not the growing of crops, but the perfection of human beings, uh, state, uh, said by uh, Masan Masanobo Masan Fukuoka. Yeah. Okay, understanding how microbiome uh, affects every aspect of your life. There are several reasons for this. When working correctly, uh, our gut digests our food and absorb nutrients so that we can have energy and vitality. So it eliminates toxins and fights pathogens. So it's also the home of trillions of microorganisms that aid in these processes and do, in, in, uh, and do so much more like uh, manage inflammation and produce neurotransmitters, okay? So in this COVID, I realized one thing that agriculture is no longer about farming. It's about feeding for health. We are confronted with a, with a, with a, with a health pandemic. So uh, COVID-19 attacks our immune health. And uh, uh, be because our food, you know, uh, is not nutrient dense, we don't have the micronutrients that we have to increase our immune health. We've been processing instant food, like processed food, high in salt, high in sugar, Canned food. Yeah, canned food. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, th this is really a, a, a time that we can introduce that the nutritious food is accessible to all. If you just fix the soil and fix the biology and bring biology back to the soil. Yeah, it doesn't have to be expensive at all. It's proven, it's proven right here in our farm that growing nutritious food is not expensive. So yeah, right. that's what it is. <laughs> So your achievements are admirable. So you're feeding for health, healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy citizen, and the Feeding Without Borders project is a joint collaboration with WHD Malaysia chapter yes. in distributing fish and vegetables to frontliners. So my next question is, what is the global impact that you foresee with Feeding Without Borders? And how can this substantiate our trade for peace initiative under world humanitarian drive uh okay i would like to say this by thomas edison all right the doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs but rather will cure and prevent disease with nutrition so trade for peace it is hard for me to understand a culture that not only hates and fights his brothers, but even attacks nature and abuses her. Man must love all creation or he will love none of it. Love is something that you and I must have. We must have it because our spirit feeds upon it. Without love, our self-esteem weakens. Without it, our courage fails. Without love, we can no longer look out confidently at the world. Instead, we turn inwardly and begin to feed upon our own personalities and little by little, we destroy ourselves. This is a quote by Chief Dan George. So PWD Smart Pharmacy is a social enterprise, all right? And, uh, and we believe uh, with this advocacy, all right, we can uh, demonstrate that how uh, we may not be brothers and sisters in faith, but we are equal in humanity. Uh, like 
disabled community in this country, we have 4.8 million. 4.8 million constitute about 15% of our population. And uh, we are the most marginalized uh, uh, in this country. So um, it's our aspiration through this trade, of, uh, trade, of, trade for peace that we can humanize uh, pe uh, people with disabilities, that they can still contribute to nation building. Yeah, so uh, uh, this, uh, so we currently, uh, the good news is this, uh, Uniglo, the, 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 the fashion, Japan fashion, all right, uh, has adopted us, approved us as their CSR, uh, CSR, uh, uh, CSR what? Uh, sorry? <laughs> I'm losing my thoughts a bit. Uh, CSR, as their CSR. All right, they will adopt our fish and adopt our, our program for us to feed the poor. And we also have a foundation from the Netherlands, all right, that uh, Samantha talked about just now, uh, that uh, support us with 900 fishes and, uh, and uh, 1.8 tons of uh, organic vegetables uh, week, uh, monthly to be distributed to the poor, all right? And we also have, uh, uh, this is really, really, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, really touch our hearts because this is a, a huge esteemed organization called PPP uh, uh, oh, Group yeah. Berhad. Uh, it, 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 uh, it belongs to a Robert Koch Foundation. All right, They have come alongside uh, to adopt 1,000 of our 500 terrariums for us to deploy to the poor. So this morning, this afternoon, we went and commit 100 boxes uh, for the first start for the, for the uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the frontliners, yes. So that's amazing sharing. And then, so I'm just going to read the comments of our virtual audience. So Ale Jason Ayaru saying, very inspiring sharing, Dr. Billy. And Honorable Bhatmavati Krishnan is saying, thanks, Samantha, for sharing your commitment and collaboration with Dr. Billy. Win is saying, you are amazing, Dr. Billy. And we have a question from Sitra Devi. So as to her knowledge, you are going through immense physical pain, but you never give up. You are very strong mentally, emotionally, and psychologically. Her question is, what is your good advice to all physical disabled people in the world? Physical? Yeah, what is your advice to all the physically disabled people in the world? Oh about your pain, how you manage, importance okay. of the people around you. Uh, my, my take on this is this, uh, the whole world is disabled. We may not be disabled, you may not be disabled physically. Today, over a screen, you know, uh, uh, you can't see me being disabled, you know, and uh, uh, we, 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 we have to, uh, confront mental health, you know, uh, depression. Uh, we have to deal with this on a daily basis, yeah. you know, and uh, we want to encourage those able body. All right, do not give up. All right, uh, 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 I would like to, I, I would like to quote this, you know, uh, 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 Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. He is known to be the missile man, you know, uh, to succeed in your mission, you must have single-minded devotion to your goal. And he also said this dream, 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 and dreams transform into thoughts and thoughts result into action. And then he also said this, all of us do not have equal talent, but all of us have an equal opportunity to develop our talents. So failure will never overtake me if my determination to succeed is strong enough. That's just amazing. So we have more comments from our virtual audience. So Ezra Tan is saying, Dr. Billy Tang and Samantha, we are proud to have you in Malaysia to be the great example of farmer. Tongi Gra has a question. Do you have a guide or 
recommend a website where we can learn how to make those plantation boxes that we saw in the video? Uh, well, the, the point of us designing this terrarium is to first and foremost shortcut to make these nutritious boxes available for the poor people first because uh, being in Malaysia, we've lost like two decades of agriculture knowledge due to industrialization. And if we were to teach people and they have to start somewhere, it means that we have to go through the pitfalls of R&D and education all over again. So the, the most pressing and the most urgent thing that's happening right now is the lack of food and the continuous need for input costs to make nutritious food available, which is what we're trying to battle with this box. So um, it's not that we don't want to teach, it's that by teaching it expands a lot of our energy and our human and our human resources. In, and instead of teaching these poor people, we should make the food available to them first. I'm pretty sure some of you have heard of this concept called Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of need. In Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of need, um, basically there are five levels of what the what, what humans need and the most and at the base of the pyramid is basically the human physiological needs where we need food, shelter, water, safety, and all of this. So if if a poor person cannot even doesn't even know what he's going to have for dinner, how do we expect this poor person to want to have the motivation to learn something else? So he needs to have his physiological needs taken care of first. And this is why we need to get the boxes out. So this is basically a, an invention designed by a person with disability for people with disabilities to make nutritious food, uh, safe and nutritious and fresh organic food, unrefriger unrefrigerated, available to people as soon as possible. So this box is actually is carbon farming. Yeah, it's carbon uh, farming. Uh, you, I mean, all of us are talking about climate change. So this box, uh, we make it market fit on urban setting is to bring back the food literacy. Yeah. Uh, that your food come from soil, good soil, and good seed, which and is good seed. What Malaysia doesn't have yet. So yes. there are a lot of things we have to start if we want to start educating people. And in fact, if you want to start a website or a, or a podcast, which is actually what we are trying to do on YouTube, it's going to be immediately about the science of composting and growing your own food. It wouldn't even be about making this box already because it's a concept of regenerative agriculture that we're trying to tell people. And there's a lot of scientific nerdy stuff that, you know, people, if they don't, if they don't care about it, they, don't, they won't think about so much of this academic thing. So how do we make people interested in regenerative agriculture and make it a household conversation to talk about, you know, putting carbon in our atmosphere back in, into our soil yeah. and talking about the microbes in the soil that will grow our food, you know, or talking about plants can actually grow out of thin air with the nitrogen fixes that are in our soil. All of this stuff, how do we get people to talk about it as interest as with as much enthusiasm as they talk about no plastic, which is this box, right? So it has to be a talking piece at home first. We have to drive a household conversation first. So in this box, you yeah. will experience the entire nitrogen cycle, mm. you know, photosynthesis, complete photosynthesis cycle complete protein cycle and it's a talking place at home for your children um, uh, they have to explain the entire nitrogen cycle maybe i'll them. just uh, yeah. to answer the question i'll just give you an example of what nitrogen cycle is right yeah. so you know the fertilizers that you buy outside the fertilizers that you buy outside they're mostly nitrate fertilizers so these nitrate fertilizers are usually what they make to cause the plants to grow in size so, but the thing is, science has proven that your plants only eats fifteen per only consumes fifteen percent of those nitrate fertilizers that you put in the soil. So, what happens to the remaining eighty five percent? It leaches back into our waterway, causing nitrate poisoning and hypoxia. Hypoxia is basically the lack of oxygen in our environment, so a lot of things start to die. Then, and in fact, agriculture is actually the top number one industry that's destroying our environment. So, how do we combat that? So now we now you understand that nitrate is used to grow your vegetables and it's available in a supermarket and you have to continuously pay money to buy the fertilizers to grow your vegetable but 79 percent of the air that we breathe in the atmosphere Wait, is nitrogen it's <laughs> nitrogen it can be converted into plant food with a special type of soil microbe in healthy soil and it only exists when the soil is healthy when it's not tainted with pesticides or whatever sites whatever sites that you put inside very, very healthy soil, like your forest soil, has this soil biology that can convert this air, converts the atmosphere into 
food for the plants. That is how regenerative agri agriculture comes about. And that is why you don't need fertilizer to grow your own food. So with whatever that I said just now, and, it's a mouthful and yeah. it's very nerdy. So like, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get a point across over there. And, it's and like, it's not like we don't want to teach. Maybe, maybe let us tell the audience this. Yeah. <laughs> if, you got the, if you got the Netflix, yeah. All right, Netflix, please watch the movie called Kiss the Ground. Yes. Okay. Uh, it took them seven years to make this movie. So um, uh, we are very fortunate that this movie substantiates what we are doing. Exactly. All right. And, uh, uh, in, and, and FAO and United Nations has declared uh, this is a decade of ecosystem restoration. Yes. All right. Ecosystem restoration. And we are right smack endorsing our advocacy and not only that the basically the united nations there's, there's a debate going on in academic space saying that the earth our whole planet has less than 60 years of farmable soil left soil. farmable we, soil farmable soil and we foresee that in the near future farmable soil is going to be as valuable as gold why yes. because if the if the economic crashes are you going to trade gold to buy what you need the soil where you can just put any seed inside and it will grow. You need the soil because that's where all our food comes from. Like, like today I just received yeah. a WhatsApp, you know, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from a sister who, who have been eating out of this box for yeah. three months already. And, uh, and uh, she, she, she didn't look after well and there's not enough sunlight. And all the vegetables, and all the vegetables yeah. died. So I told her, don't panic. I will teach you step by step. He said, I got no green hands. I cannot touch uh vegetable were all will die one so i say no I'm, I, I'm gonna debunk that myth yeah you know and uh and i say just follow my instruction i want your hand to re restore your own box so i asked her to clean up all the dead leaves and all the dead plants in the box and uh find uh the fresh stems you know and replant yourself back into the box no fertilizer no fertilizer Where's this Healthy soil with water or your rice water. And if I can share the picture, amazing. Yeah. She grew back her own box full. Today, she sent me the yeah. picture. She said, I couldn't believe it. My own hands had brought life back to the vegetable where healthy soil is gold, you know. All you need is a good seed to put on a healthy soil and you've got food. Yeah. You have your own food sovereignty. This is where we want to demonstrate food security. When there's, when there's food even to the marginalized and the poor, then we are bending the linear economy curve into a circular where trade for peace, you know, can be realized. All right? Because uh, uh, the, the, the COVID-19 did not break the system. All right? It exposes us being vulnerable of the supply chain. Yeah, so so if, you are, yeah. if you are an economist, all right, uh, supply and demand to drive GDP will not work anymore. You have to pivot now. You have to pivot now that you've got to bend the linear economy curve into a circular economy. So you cannot dive GDP with the decade of ecosystem restoration announced by FAO and United Nations, okay, uh, at the expense of the poor and the environment now. So instead of fighting each other, we as a social enterprise is offering, you know, uh, uh, ourselves uh, out there to, uh, to this corporation that uh, out of their social element, all right, to ban this linear economy curve, to a circular economy. So bottom line is that you, how do we meet the needs of the people within the health of the planet? Just put everything that we say in perspective. If it's too nerdy, basically, if you have a healthy soil that can grow food over and over again without buying stuff, without spending money, the soil can grow things from thin air. The soil can grow food from thin air. You can end hunger. You can end poverty. Isn't that amazing? Science is great. So yeah, that is what we are trying to do with this box. And for those of you who are interested to start growing your own food at home, we highly recommend doing your own composting at home. At least that's a really good start. And um, try to educate yourself on um, fertilizer use and pesticide use and also composting. And also most importantly, go and watch that movie called Kiss the Ground on Netflix. And, and also you understand our everything. economics on 
uh, our mm. economic, and if you're interested in economics, please also check out uh, Kate Rewer's Donut Economics. We will not touch on that so much because I'm, I know we have limited time. Yeah. So I think we right. will not hold up the audience so much on our nerdy <laughs> stuff. As you can see, if we talk, we really talk non-stop. So maybe... We are so passionate. <laughs> so maybe we can proceed with the next question or something. Otherwise, it will never end. Just yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of useful information shared there. So bottom line, take the shortcut instead of making your own boxes, save time and effort, just get in touch with PWD Smart Farm Mobility. So for our next question, well, you sort of answered this one about um, thinking that everybody is disabled, but what should people know about disability? What would you like to see in the way people treat those with disabilities and what can employers and colleagues do to make it a better environment for you and for people with disability? Uh, I have, um, I see, in Malaysia, we try to achieve 1% in our employment cater for a disabled community. But uh, physically, when we are disabled, employer got to understand that to uh, uh, accommodate one one disabled person in your workforce uh, you must make sure the basic amenities are there uh, a toilet very important to us uh, the disabled community is toilet and uh, toilet in the public area is always not conducive not wheelchair friendly and the rest you know so um, uh, the other thing is that we only have 50% of our performance, you know, because we are on medication, we are, uh, we are in pain, you know, and whatnot. Uh, uh, so that's the reason why against all odds, I'm trying to uh, rise up from these ashes of defeat and create the, uh, 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 an icon. Uh, by the way, I'm also a, a Malaysian uh, icon under the Ministry of Health, Spinal Cord Injury. I'm a national icon as well. I asked myself, if I, what, what would I do carrying this title? You know, so I, I, that's why I want to inspire my peers uh, not to give up their dreams and work and life works. I have to demonstrate that uh, we are still able to contribute uh, to nation building and society. And uh, they are, I'm not alone. Uh, we stumble a lot, a, a lot, a lot of uh, 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 disabled people. Uh, just don't throw away from us. There's an old age home run by uh, 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 disabled, you know, and uh, he, he, he look after uh, all the old age uh, people, you know, he got a stroke and he blinded one eye and yet he's running a disabled uh, 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 old age home, you know, so we are supporting him. Uh, uh, with our uh, terrarium box, we, we 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 bring this box as a therapy for the for the uh, old age people staying there, got nothing to do, you know. And this box uh, brought life, you know, because they find this box that they could connect back to nature, you know. Uh, they 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 harvest from the box and they cook cooked it, and then the following week they see they are. The the, the 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 plant regrow again, you know. So these these are things that uh, uh, hard to quantify the intangible that you have uplift a soul, all right. Unless you go down to the ground and touch one life, uh, you won't stop. Yeah. Can I also add my personal yeah. experience for a for a person who just started living with someone who with disabilities. I can actually see how my perspective changed from. Last time before I lived in this farm together with Dr. Billy to right, right now after living with him for one year or so, I realized that if, um, if people with disabilities were put in an environment where they are not constantly reminded of their disabilities, they are able to thrive and they are definitely able to shine with their natural talents and everything. And just like what Dr. Billy said, we have so many centers that are so many unsung heroes that are actually run by people with disabilities. The first one being the, the uncle from this old folks home where he has a, where he's blinded half eye and he has a stroke survivor and he's running an old folks home. The second one is uh, another pair, uh, blind, fully blind. blind. He trained up, he trained up like 200 over people. Wait, 1,000. He trained up 1,000 blind people to, to become acupuncturists and masseur. So like, they don't have a digital presence. They don't have, and they don't have a digital presence. But, and one thing is that, you know, for, 
and when we look at those um, people with disabilities that are not so fortunate to have strong support systems around them, the people around them who love them and give them enough encouragement to you know, get out of their mental prison of being disabled, you can see that they are constantly reminding themselves of their disability. And even, you know, sometimes when you go outside to, to um, society or even to a shopping mall that is not very accessible, those are the kind of, those are kind of experiences that we regular people, we don't feel it that much because it's the buildings are built for us. But for, for simple things like there's no ramp, there's no toilet, there's no escalator, the lift is some, in some secluded place. The, People with disabilities are just constantly made to feel disabled in an environment that is not built to include them. And that is what I want to emphasize that inclusivity is so important in everything, yeah. including architecture, even in clothes design. There's, this, there's one TED talk that I watched and I think she's like the only one that's most inspiring about, um, about uh, adaptive clothing. Adapt because you know, you know um, fashion is actually one, one thing that how people express ourselves and it plays a huge role on our self-esteem, but there's not enough um, fashion or clothing items that are designed around people with disabilities because self-esteem plays a very important role in our lives as well. It's not so much about helping people with disabilities integrate back to work. What about their, what about their hobbies? What about the things they like? What about their self-esteem? So all of these little, little things that we normal people, we able-bodied people still have to really expose ourselves more to people with disabilities understand their needs and create a safer and more inclusive environment to, you know, not make them, not remind them of their disability so much. Because seriously, my personal experience tells me that if they are not constantly reminded of their disability, they can thrive. And hence why I mentioned in that interview video earlier that it's not about helping people with disabilities, it's about giving them a platform to help them see themselves in a new light. Yeah. It's very important. This whole perception of self that can elevate them so yeah so we want to be your farmer we want to be your food we want to be your health <laughs> so this one way that uh, 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 I, 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 I try to reconnect back to society yeah like Dr. Billy's personal interest is in the area of agriculture and you see he's not constantly reminded of his disabilities he's <laughs> surrounded by people who love him and people who do everything for him and he's one of the really really lucky ones but for for the ones that are um financially less capable it's really sad you know there's a lot of things we have to improve in our system i, th I think it's a lot of a lot of it has to do with uh, systematic oppression of people yeah with so that's why we want to let them uh have this box to eat healthy first mm. and then uh while they are they are actually learning by consuming mm. yes and then uh, uh we want to uh, adopt them as our workforce uh, and also uh, create a social entrepreneurship for them. Uh, in the midst of a COVID, uh, we are not going to talk about that, but we did sign a joint venture agreement to downstream our tilapia into finished product. That is a, a good protein, all right, into uh, uh, biscuits and a range of products and including tilapia ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah, these are exciting things that's coming. So when we say that we want to commercialize our product, we have to downstream the product into a finished product. Yeah, and uh, we want to create this uh, uh, social entrepreneurship for for uh, for the marginalized uh, to be uh, uh, financially independent. Mm. Yeah. We're working towards that. We are working, towards, working that. towards that. Yeah. By the way, we signed with a 108 year old university from the Philippines, Central Luzon <laughs> State University. It's amazing. Yeah, because, of, yeah, because of my two decades of social uh, uh, social works in the Philippines, after the accident, um, uh, uh, they 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 asked me how could they help me back, you know. So I said I need a university. So uh, yeah, we need we will we will get the third year student to do. We are bringing all our innovation into an academic journal. All right. Uh, uh, into academic journey. So the third year student can actually come and do a thesis, you know, on this box. Uh, they gave us a calculation, like if you, if you eat out of this, this, uh, uh, this terrarium box, you're actually secreting 2.35 kilogram of carbon per year, right? Yeah, more so, nerdy stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's more nerdy stuff. So our market fit on this, on this box is that 
we got 9 million uh, uh, urbanization population in uh, Kuala Lumpur and Petaling Jaya. We are looking at 1% market fit, uh, looking at the uh, beachhead, uh, Busa, uh, the, the uh, Malaysia, uh, one of these beachhead to, 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 uh, 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 to adopt these boxes. So we're talking about um, out of 9 million, 80,000, 8 million, 80,000 boxes. So if it's 80,000 boxes, you times by 2.34 kilogram of secretion of carbon. So we're going to launch a, a labeling called My Carbon Farm. So you're actually helping the environment by eating out of our box. Personally, you are contributing to uh, uh, climate change resilience. Yes. So today is the call of the horizon day a day about dreaming big and planning to make your dreams happen so with all the things you're doing you're giving people inspiration and in making their dreams real as well so is there like um a tip you'd like to share about um making dreams real making dreams real <sighs> making dreams real mm, i i think the most important is actually the people that you surround yourself with yeah. So that's not really being talked a lot about in um, Western philosophy, I think, because it's, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people talk about resilience, discipline and everything, but your support system is equally important. Yeah, I always used to say, how, how do you want to see the next five years, the version of yourself? It's actually the people you hang around with, the people you spend time with, and of course, the books you read, you know, it will, 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 will influence you the, the next five years who you will become. Right. So those are great tips. So yeah. let's go to the next question. What important lessons did you learn during the pandemic? And what are the activities that you have been doing mm -hmm. during the pandemic? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, okay. You also have a video for us. Do you want to show that one first? Yeah, I think better. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's do that. To, I'm let's losing see the video. I'm trying to recharge. <laughs> I'm trying to recharge. The pain is hitting me. <laughs> We want to thank Inspector Hamdan, uh, USJ8, for granting this permit for us to uh, deploy our terrarium uh, box. We want to thank Goodnight for their adoption. Uh, these adoption boxes of 32 uh, boxes will go to Pulau Indah, uh, Bagan Halam, and uh, Tanjung Harapan. Ah, for fishing. So they sell all this. This is their another source of income, lah. It's the, the only source of income. The only source of income. Yeah, they are selling all this without fishing, lah. They, they cannot do anything. Ini, ini, ini pulau 
ringgit, ini lima ringgit. Oke. Okay. Nah, kalau mau mau angka lima ringgit kita buka kita kita buka lah. Ini oh. kalau mau sepuluh lah. Oke. Okay. Outreach projects that you've been yeah, doing. Yeah, that is yeah, pandemic? uh, yeah. Those are our one. That's one of our outreach program. Yeah. And the reason why we decided to send you this video is to them is to just show to the world that this is actually really happening in Malaysia right now. This video was shot uh, in January. We actually have a follow up video that was shot in June. So um, what was happening in that video is those places that we went are actually fishermen villages. They are the indigenous people of Malaysia, and they are usually sideline that you, you see a few of them they live in very squatter squatter like situations they've been evicted from their from their land several times already and they have to live by the roadside next to the mangroves and 
over there, they are unable to plant anything. And with this continuous lockdown, they are even unable to go to the sea to fish. And being fishermen and being indigenous with no access to a lot of basic needs, they do not have other life skills to support themselves. And that is this is what we meant by, you know, sometimes it's not even about starting with teaching or whatever. We have to start with feeding because you... You can't teach a hungry man how to fish. I mean, if you give a hungry man a fishing rod, he's not going to be able but to fish. More feeding for help. Exactly. So you have to feed him first. So this is what we've been trying to do, going to several really hardcore poor places to ensure that they are being well fed. And this is actually one of the very important things to, you know, curb and prevent the onset of social issues. For example, if I mean a hungry man is an angry man, they can they can do so much damage if they are not being taken care of or if they are being sick. And if the poor people fall sick, it's going to be another vicious cycle. Choke because, up the healthcare system. Yeah, they're going to choke up the healthcare system. They're not able to purchase medication. Yeah, these are hardcore poor issue. people. So what you see over there in that village is that we have been deployed. We are working very closely with Food Bank and NGO to deploy uh, when we will be deploying the fresh nutritious food and they'll be deploying the essentials, the essentials like groceries, potatoes and onions rice cooking oil and those kind of stuff and uh if you can if you can see from the video a lot of the villagers are actually obese especially the women it's because of the low of the quality of the food that they've been eating they all they, the kind of donation that they get is bread biscuit more bread cake um instant noodles those kind of yeah those kind of food and it's just not really healthy or sustainable for the economy in the long time and yeah so what the one thing that we learned in the pandemic is that uh yeah the pandemic we are really we are really thankful to be on the side of the giver than the receiver i came up i mean i grew up in a christian household so last time they have this verse that is more blessed to give than to receive i didn't understand like why is it more blessed to give people than to receive but then now i understand because we have we we have abundance and we are able to give we are able to help we are we are extending the help instead of asking for help. So, and the situation is not improving at all. It's really sad. I really wish that we could end this like on a lighter <laughs> note and a positive note. But um, Doctor Willie just actually finished crying. He he was crying to me and saying that I couldn't, I I I can't I can't bear seeing all these people going hungry and like yeah, compassion fatigue is all time high. So if we were to learn anything, is that we are a very vulnerable society and we didn't know. And the reason why we haven't been hit by a pandemic of this scale is purely because we are lucky. We have been damaging the environment so much. There's this, I mean, there's even a term for this. It's called zoonotics. Yeah. COVID-19 is a zoonotic issue. And yeah, want, want to say what we can learn. It's just yeah. that the pandemic really sucks. <laughs> yeah, how to balance, how to balance how to between balance. human life, yeah. livestock, and the environment. I think uh, I think the United Nations and FAO they are, they are all uh, very vibrantly moving in yes. this direction. And we are so happy we, we, uh, uh, to, to, to know that... Uh, we are our, going the right yeah, direction. Yeah, we are going in the right direction. That's right. The greatest reset would be to pivot away from just looking at our ROI and GDP. Yeah. We only have a few decades left to yeah. actually fix this planet. Yeah. And, 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 and because the microbiology controls everything, you know, our health... The, uh, uh, the health of all plants, the health of our world, and even our state of mind. Mood and mindset are directly affected by the microbes in our guts. So if you're eating more chemical food, uh, we're not going to get a micro, good microbiome on our gut. You know? and, uh, and all the disease and the non communicable diseases will surface. You know, we have to reverse our food chain. Uh, to uh, because of this pandemic, we do not know the variant that has been mutated. Yeah. You know, uh, we have to reset now our lifestyle and our diet. How to make nutritious food accessible to all? Uh, that is the pre prestigious award that we have won, and uh, we are we we must live up to it, and uh, we must uh, improve and pivot further. You know uh, that it will reach all people and uh, uh, that's what we are doing we are working so hard yeah so we've seen what PWD smart farmability does 
So you've given us inspiring messages. Yeah. So for the last question, how will our virtual audience get in touch with you? <laughs> okay. Facebook, like us on Facebook, Facebook, like yeah. us on Facebook, uh, uh, like us on YouTube. You can see all our social impact there. Uh, we, we've gone to the street to feed the homeless uh, during the first lockdown. And uh, because there's so many uh, duplicate giving, the government uh, put a law that we can't feed people on the street yeah. anymore. So it's really sad. So uh, we got to we find out where you're coming yeah. from, but then yeah. it's still sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we are finding other ways to feed the poor now. Yeah, we work with uh, uh, the uh, uh, the MPs in the area. You know, uh, the representative of the people in the area. Anyone yeah. who has gone down anyone. to the ground. Before. Anyone uh, listening here uh, who are Malaysians, if you are in touch with any invisible poor that needed a decent protein. And, uh, and a regenerative vegetable, please connect with us. We need they the are our target beneficiaries. Yes, yes. We want to help the poor, like yes. really hardcore poor. Yes, yes. So thank you so much, Dr. Billy Tang Chi Sang, Malaysia's yes. paraplegic farmer, founder and CEO of multi-award winning social enterprise, PWD Smart Farm Mobility, and Samantha Mock, co-founder of PWD Smart Farm Mobility for honoring us with your presence, sharing your words of wisdom, expertise, and inspiring story with the world. So in honor of international recognition for your virtue in persistently serving and inspiring humanity with your noble deeds, World Humanitarian Drive would like to award you Dr. Hello. Billy Tang and Miss Samantha <laughs> Mock with Inspiring Humanitarian Award. So thank, you thank, you. So much. thank you so much. We are so honored to receive this award. We will treasure it with our hearts. And it will be on our wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to be adding another award to your wall. So thank you. <laughs> All of this is treasured in our hearts. Like, it's not just another paper. Like, it's really something that we treasure. It us hearts. to work yeah. even harder. Yeah. Thank you so much, Miss Viva. You have been wonderful. You've been a wonderful host. Right. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Billy and Samantha, for all your humanitarian works. And here's to many more and many more awards as well. Thank you so, so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us here today. So Dr. Billy Tang, Chi Sang, founder and CEO of multi-award winning social enterprise, PWD Smart for Mobility, and Samantha Mock. We would like to share a quotation by... American actor, director, activist, Christopher Reeve. A hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion with Dr. Billy and Samantha, that it motivated you to follow your dreams in creating a better world despite obstacles you have to face in the process. Here on Inspiring Millions show, we present you with brilliant people from around the world. So feel free to connect with them on social media. If today's discussion inspired you, please like it, share it, send us a comment, click the bell so you'll receive notifications from us. Also do share with us your takeaways from today. Follow us in our social media accounts. Click subscribe on our YouTube channel, WHD Media. Visit WHD website, www.whd.org.uk for more inspiring events. Stay safe and healthy. These are challenging times for everyone. So please remember to be kind to yourself and to others. To our frontliners, we salute you. We thank you for your hard work, sacrifices, and dedication to humanity. On Sunday, it's Cheer Up the Lonely Day and World Population Day. To all those celebrating their birthdays and special milestones this week, happy celebrations. Have a wonderful weekend. On behalf of WHD team, especially those working behind the scenes, WHD Chairman Dr. Abdul Basit Saeed, WHD Director of Global Operations, Ms. Sarah Wilson, WHD's 12 Honorable Secretary Generals, we thank you, our virtual audience from around the world, for joining us and supporting our show. This has been World Humanitarian Drive's Inspiring Millions Show. 
I'm Viva Andrada O'Flynn. Please join us again next Friday. We will have a discussion with Honorable Ali Hussein, Member of Parliament in Maldives, as we inspire the world here on Inspiring Millions Show.